to why oh why the podcast where we talk about things with an element of mystery misrepresentation or confusion i said those in a different way to how i normally did uh so that was weird but uh anyway i'm <laughs> i'm i'm matt heartless the musician journalist and and idiot this week and i'm and i'm aj hill uh comedian and idiot and the only one out of the two of us is actually drinking to, at the minute so that's <laughs> yeah that's it, it, it can only go downhill from here <laughs> But uh, today we're going to talk about the theft of the World Cup. Dun, dun, dun. Um, before we do that, though, a bit of housekeeping. You can find us on social media, Y0Y Podcast, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. You can also support us on Buy Me A Coffee. You can give just a one-off thing or you can uh, be a monthly subscriber to us. That's buymeacoffee.com slash Y0YMCR to go there and there's lots of bonus content that should be up by you know i don't know if there'll be lots actually there's bonus content that will be up by the time you are hearing this and if you are hearing this after lockdown you could just find us and take us out for a coffee <laughs> yeah yeah do that as well that, that'd be uh, that'd be very nice uh yeah how have the last two weeks been for you aj uh the last two weeks have been phenomenal i have done things in the future that i didn't <laughs> expect i would do um yeah, so yes so we are um <laughs> I am. I, I'm joking because we are recording this episode and the last episode back to back, just because we had um, a fair bit of time off because AJ had to self isolate so we couldn't be in the same place. Yes. Uh, to record, uh, and though we did do a bonus episode um, over the internet, the bandwidth makes it not sound great, so we decided to wait for the, the all uh, clear. Yeah, the by all the clear. NHS. Uh, yes, but yeah, we, we decided to wait for that so we could meet up again and do the episodes properly. So we're just playing catch up a bit. So but we're talking about that other famous institution, not the NHS, but football. Yes, football. So, yeah. Um, well, I said we're talking about the World Cup theft for any England fans listening. We're not talking about the hand of God in 86. That's We're not going into that. This is the theft of the actual trophy. Uh, Which trophy? So the Well, the Jules Rimet trophy. So, uh, just a little bit of background on the uh, on the World Cup. Uh, the first World Cup was held in 1930 uh, in Uruguay, and Uruguay were the winners of the first tournament. Were they? They were, yeah. Wow. Uruguay won it. They won it twice, actually. They won it in 1950 as well. But um, it was it was a small event at first because the the Olympics were seen as more important. Um, but uh, Jules Rimet was inspired by how professional the game was. Uh, being conducted, uh, how professionally, sorry, the game is being conducted in South America uh, and invented the, the, the World Cup to improve competition in, in the sport on, on all the other continents as well. Right. Because it was, it was just seen as, a, you know, it, it was fun and, and, uh, uh, and people were taking it sort of semi-seriously in Europe, but in South America, they were absolutely hot on it, properly into football and Jules Rimet, was inspired by that and he wanted the game in his native France and Europe and all the world really to be like it was in South America. Uh, now, there were three World Cups before the Second World War. Yep. And then obviously during the war, they didn't have them. But uh, following World War II, um, Jules Rimet fought to bring it back as a, as, as, a, as a peace broker, really. So after the war, Jules Rimet started a war. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm gonna fight. You know, I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I don't think it was quite that violent, but um, but yeah, no, he was, he was he was he was quite keen to have the World Cup as this thing to you know increase visibility between between nations and to have this this kind of lighter competition rather than a nice friendly competition. Yeah. Let's do friendly competitions, exactly. guys, not fighty competitions. I mean, yeah. Obviously, if you've seen any of the last few World Cups, it's now become so important that friendly is not a word I'd use to describe it, but. Um, you know, it's an admirable thing to do. And that is why we have the World Cup. And that's why it's so popular now. Uh, it was basically because of this man, Jules Rimet. He put a lot of effort into making it a thing. But, but it's so, quite, to be honest with you, I didn't know that. And that's remarkable that some, yeah. just one guy is like, I'm going to, we're going to have a World Cup. Yeah. So I mean, he, he, he was the president of FIFA at ah, the time. Okay. So like, he, he, he wasn't just he a was random bloke. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. How would it be good if we all got together to have one giant football tournament? 
quite. Uh, the, the the reason I'm talking about all this is is just to say that even in 1966, mm-hmm. which is you know quite a long time, it was 36 years after the first World Cup. Yep, the World Cup still wasn't as important as it is now. No. So if you're thinking, well, how could the trophy possibly have been stolen? Like, yeah, there's no way it would happen now without it being a serious kind of heist. Whereas in 1966, there wasn't as much interest in the World Cup as as, as we have today. It hadn't quite got to the, the level of just the world stops while the World Cup's going on yes. that we have at the moment. Uh, so the, the trophy itself is styled in the image of the Greek gods Aniki, and who, Nike. Nike, who you will know more commonly as Nike or Nike, the sports brand are named after the same goddess, uh, the, the Greek goddess of victory. The trophy, anyway, it was gold-plated, but it was made out of, and for some reason I haven't written it down, but I think it was nickel. Yeah, gold-plated, uh, it was nickel. Yeah, 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 yeah. it was made, made out of nickel uh, and affixed to a, a, a stand which had the plaque with the winner's mm-hmm. names on it. So, Jules Rimet, he, he passed away in 1956. <laughs> Jules Rimet, he passed away. <laughs> I didn't mean to make that right. But so, yeah, he, he passed away in, in, in 1956 mm-hmm. um, and left instructions that um, whoever, because the trophy had already been named after him at that yep. point, whoever, whichever team first won the trophy three times would get to keep it okay. forever. In, in 1960, England were selected as hosts for the 1966 World Cup which was actually quite important at the time because it was the first time since the Second World War that the World Cup was being held in a country directly affected by... The World uh, War? Yeah, by, by the World Fascinating. War. Fascinating. I did not know that. Mm. So that's 1966. So now we're going to get into the... After the trophy arrived in England, to okay. it being stolen. So uh, in January 1966, the, the trophy arrives in England. Um, and it's, In January, it's, that's quite mm. quick. Oh, sorry, that's quite a long time before, before the actual World Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, the... The reason for that is because it's 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 a big press thing, right? Oh, so it's like here's the World Cup. Ah, yeah, hype. yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, it's 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 kept in the uh, the FA's headquarters mm-hmm. for for most of the time, but uh, companies putting out exhibitions and stuff could apply to have the the World Cup at their exhibition sure. to drive their commerce. Mm-hmm. And uh, the the one in question was Stampex, which is a a, a stamp company. Uh, and they applied to have permission to to have it at their exhibition, which which they they were granted that permission in February. And right. on the nineteenth of March, their exhibition opened at Westminster Central Hall, and so it was from here that the the trophy was stolen. But how and when? I hear you ask. Well, I will tell you how and when. <laughs> One of the problems with Westminster Central Hall is that on Sundays it was used by uh, the Methodist Church that's, for for that's their ridi- service. That's ridiculous. So on Sunday, really? so like, on Sunday, so on, on the nineteenth of March, which was a Saturday, the exhibition opened. People were able to go and look at the World Cup. On the twentieth of March, the exhibition was closed because it was being used for a Methodist service, and there were a few guards sort of knocking about to make sure the World Cup wasn't stolen, but not as many as they would have been when the exhibition was actually open. So. Blimey. At twelve ten PM, have him sort of just dust off for a while, not really done their checks properly. They decided to do an afternoon an afternoon round to make sure everything was still in place. Oh dear, it wasn't place. Um It wasn't place. <laughs> the display case had been forced open and the trophy was gone. Uh, they, they must they must have lost their jobs. Surely they lost their I, jobs. I I couldn't find any information on that. Well one, one of the problems with talking about things that happened before the internet came about is that the, a lot of the records, newspaper articles at the time no longer exist. Um, no longer any paparazzi. Well, there weren't paparazzi back in the day going, Alf, well, Alf Bennett didn't go and... Well, quite, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not even known what they Do his job. Are. Doesn't um, even know he's... Doing, yeah. uh, so one, one guard and one churchgoer report seeing a strange man sort of knocking about. He was just hanging around outside the toilets. When, you know, if, if he was there for the Methodist church service, why wasn't he at the service? Why was he just hanging around outside the toilet? This was on Sunday, right? Yeah, this was on the Sunday. So he'd probably been on the last of the night before, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Who back, knows? Back when you could go to pubs in 1966. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's all they've got. They've, um, so a strange man. Yeah, they, they've got this lead of a strange man. One, the, the churchgoer gives a different description to the guard, so they've seen different people. Well, that sounds mighty suspicious. Mm, indeed. Well, we yeah we we can we might go down that direction when we talk about the theories as to who as to who solved it. But one of the things that I that I loved 
finding out about this is that the whole the whole thing is like um a, an inspector clues pink panther film like everyone is just massively incompetent yeah uh, and everything kind of happens by mistake so the papers yeah. uh, you know the police were like right okay we, we need to put this this it's not an it's an ethic now isn't it i don't know what it'd be called then but the identity identikit picture yeah of the, the, yeah, yeah, the artist artist's impression. Artist's impression. Yeah, 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 yeah the, the sketch of this guy. The papers got the wrong one. The, the papers managed to use. Uh, oh no, it wasn't a. Sorry, it wasn't a sketch. It was a description. They just used a different description. They managed to get a description for somebody else completely unrelated. Sasquatch, <laughs> maybe. So the answer to all of our so mysteries everyone, is Sasquatch. So everyone was looking around mm-hmm. for for the wrong person so it, it might well have been that this this interloper could have been seen by loads of people being suspicious in and around westminster central hall nobody bothered reporting it because they were looking, looking for, for somebody guy. else so uh, the day afterwards the 21st of march uh, joe mears who was the the chairman of the english football association at the mm-hmm. time uh, he receives a phone call saying that he will get a package at uh, Chelsea at their ground Stamford Bridge. Okay. I uh, he, I believe he was the he was the owner. Um and the man the man who called him was called Jackson. He identified himself as Jackson. Uh, nothing else. So on the 22nd of March. There's some the, very sketchy pieces of information. My name is Jackson. What's your first name? Jackson. Jackson <laughs> Jackson. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean you're not you're not going to say well, hello, my name is Matthew Hartless and I've got you know, I wouldn't Obviously, I wasn't born in 1966, so I did not steal this trophy. So you can't pin that one on me. That's quite a good alibi, though, isn't it? If you were going to steal it. <laughs> well, I wouldn't be born. I wasn't born yet. It couldn't have been years. me. But <laughs> was it? This man identifying himself as Jackson has made this phone call saying that uh, yeah, the FA chairman will get a package at the club that he owns, mm-hmm. the football club that he owns. So, yep, that package does indeed arrive the following day. Uh, and it contains a removable lining from from the Jules Rimet trophy oh. to prove that they have stolen the real thing uh, and a ransom note asking for 15,000 uh, pounds which is about 281,000 pounds today wow that's a lot of money. Uh, just for inflation now it was the world cup was only worth 3,000 uh, pounds sort of its financial value was for the for the parts is 3,000 pounds but its symbolic value well indeed for yeah, the yeah, nation um, and we'll get onto that later but uh, yeah that, that's about 56,000 pounds today was how much the physical trophy was actually this Jackson fellow that who we presume then also delivered this well didn't deliver it but posted this package uh, he said in in the package that uh, uh, Joe Mears needed to put a coded message advertisement in 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 the the evening news okay that said happy to do business joe uh, and then they would know to then get in touch with him to then sort out the ransom Ooh. and the trophy they were also told don't involve the police at any point you know you involve the police we'll melt it down you know that'll be it of course joe mears did contact the police which you'd kind of expect really yes uh, he contacted detective inspector charles buggy <laughs> he's called Charles Boogie that's his name Charles Boogie <laughs> um, and they they assembled the ransom uh, but they put plain paper sandwiched between real notes so they had a briefcase full of money it wasn't actually £15,000 in there it was only a few notes uh, on the 25th of March uh-huh. Joe Mears is to await a phone call with two assistants who were actually uh, police officers and the, uh, apparently they looked Unlike police officers, according to Detective Inspector Charles Buggy, I think was the one who said that, but it might have been just anyone in the police because I couldn't find a like citation for that quote. They were just they, described as being, they, they looked most unlike police officers, or most unlike the public perception of police officers. So they were just wearing their normal clothes. Well, they, obviously they were in plain clothes, yeah. but, um, <laughs> but they were supposed to not look like We've dressed them like firemen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Things go worse here because just before the, the phone call was due to take place, uh, Joe Mears had an angina attack and then ended up being bedridden with all of these coppers and his wife in his house, all just sort of standing around going, oh, what do we do now? The phone rang, the, the wife answered uh, and was just like, oh, Joe's a bit ill, but I can put you on to his assistant, McPhee. Uh, and uh, Detective Inspector Buggy goes, hello, this is McPhee. Even though Jackson was a little suspicious at first, he went, nah, it's probably fine. FA chairman, they have assistants. They get ill. Yeah. It happens. It does happen. I trust McPhee. 
He's like me. He only gives one name. Yeah, McPhee. I like a man like that. Yeah, <laughs> it's not. It's not got anything to hide whatsoever. <laughs> like I'm called yeah. Jackson. I've not got anything to hide. I'm just Jackson Jackson. This is McPhee McPhee. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. You know. yeah. So everything's going swimmingly. So they decide to meet up. Battersea. I thought this is football that we're talking about. Not <laughs> everything's going football. Oh, it's going grassy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the right pitch. <laughs> hey! <laughs> very good, very good. So Jackson told <laughs> McPhee with McPhee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Told told McPhee to uh, to to meet him at uh, Battersea Park. He was driving Joe Mears' car. That's that's why. So he knew the car. So a police officer stole a, a very ill man's car. <laughs> Basically, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they weren't like normal police officers at all. <laughs> like they're not what the public would expect. They were doing Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, they're twocking cars. So, so McPhee immediately <laughs> decides to show Jackson the the ransom because that's that's that's. What you do when you've when you when you've got a hastily put together dodgy looking ransom, you just go look at this, mate. But uh, Jackson, he didn't expect the ransom. He trusted McPhee. McPhee's a man after his own heart. Didn't bother to look very closely at it. <laughs> one, and was like, yeah, that's one, fine, mate. One word name, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So he didn't bother to inspect it. So that that passed. That was fine. So then you know he got in the car and he told Joe. Uh, not Joe, sorry. He told McPhee where to drive. I'm beginning to think that Jackson's not a criminal mastermind. Well, quite. So they, they, they start driving around London. Right. Well, they, they kind of just drive circuitously around the park. The police, who were actually police, decided... Yeah, they presumably got a bit bored because they decided to just be obvious about the fact that they were following them. So they just kept driving along this circuitous route. Oh, for with, God's sake. Uh, tailing, tailing McPhee and Jackson. Um, with with blacked out windows, so, when so it was said, obviously the, the, they they were trying not to be seen, and yet they were just driving. So around when they them. said they were like they were not behaving the way the public would expect them to behave, you, they weren't behaving in an intelligent fashion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, was like, well, yeah. We surely wouldn't expect us to be this stupid. You're a genius. Yeah, that's basically what happened. So Jackson were they driving he, in a buggy as well? But please tell me they were driving in a buggy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd, I'd love it if they were, but uh, no, they they were driving in. Whose in buggy's that? Van- Charles' buggy's buggy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were driving in vans with blacked out windows. So uh, Jackson, Jackson, he got spooked. Jackson, Jackson got spooked. <laughs> Jackson, Jackson got spooked. Uh, McPhee, and he, McPhee. Um, he jumped out of some traffic lights and said he was uh, he was going to go and go and get the trophy. Uh, and he walked off, and then this van pulled pulled out next to him. So he turned around and came back, and was just like, "What? What, what is this car? Why does this car keep appearing?" And McPhee, he has a he has a he has a brilliant idea. So he accuses Jackson of being behind this 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 car with blacked out windows. He's like, Are "You trying to rob me? Like I keep seeing this car coming around. Are you trying to nickel my money?" And Jackson's like, "No, I'm not trying to do that." And um, appears a bit. Upset that that uh, you know he's being uh, slated as being. So I thought we were dis- friends, dis- McPhee. Yeah. Yeah. So so he gets back in the car to play Kate and McPhee. This guy's a moron. Like, then, I'm sorry, this guy's such oh, an no. idiot. Well, it's it's he it does I think realize what he's done a moment later because um, while the, they're moving, he then says, "I'm off," and just jumps out of the car. Good. <laughs> while it's moving, first um, sensible thing he's done in his whole entire yeah, episode, as, and and then. A boogie then also is the first sensible thing he's done, which is he stops the car and then chases him. And he's a boogie by this point has dropped his alias of McPhee. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you don't just start running after someone for no reason because he, he, he didn't take the he didn't take case. the money. He didn't take the money. He just ran off. So, yeah, but um, if you're a foot, to be fair, if you're a football assistant to the head of FIFA, well, it's the head of the FA. FA, but. sorry, folks, uh, I don't watch football, but. If you did it, if you are into football and you football, well, yeah, yeah, football yeah, crazy, you would just go, hey, that's our trophy. We need that back. It, the FA will not survive without the trophy. What about Charles? What's his name? The trophy guy. The tro- Jules, Jules Ramey. Jules Ramey. I'm trying to call him Charles Ramey. Sorry. Jules Ramey. He, he fought after the, after all the wars were over in the he world. He kept fighting. He kept he fighting. Like, I'm not yeah. done yet. <laughs> so like, you know, with that in, in mind, McPhee, as the assistant to the head of the FA would be like, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm McPhee getting, of the F get, of the FE <laughs> of the FBI <laughs> <laughs> of the FA. <laughs> Who do I work for? What's going on? Who am I? So Charlie Boy's after him. Yeah, yeah. Charles Charles Buggy's after him, and he uh, he catches him in someone's back garden. Jackson can't get away. Turns out his real name is Edward Bletchley, and he was a local petty thief. Now he he Looked claims. Out. 
he claims that he had been offered five hundred pounds by somebody he only knew as the pole. What? 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 what to what? To, to fence the cup, and that's about nine and a half grand in today's money. Well, hang on. So he's asking for fifteen thousand. And he was going to get 500. Well, exactly. That's the the police also asked him the same question. It's just like, that does not seem likely. Also, I do like that in 1966, um, a petty thief, a known petty thief is a, a, a reasonable occupation. <laughs> like, oh, he's just a known petty thief. That's his job. <laughs> like, what? That's what he does. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the thing is, is he, he doesn't know where the World Cup is. He says... He was supposed to get. He was the go between between this this the go between person. Between. He was the go between. But oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. He he was the go between for the uh, well for who he thought was He's Joe Mills. Fencing it, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and and this mysterious individual known as the pole. So the he, pole. The pole. Yeah, and I don't know whether, whether that means the Polish person or or the or stick. A metal rod. Yeah. 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 So they maybe can't get maybe anywhere. it was a scaffolder. Maybe uh, there was somebody doing <laughs> well, scaffolding yeah, work. Yeah. Took the opportunity. What's your name? Uh, scaffolder. Pole. The pole. Yeah. Yeah. Scaffolder. And his assistant, the vault. The vault. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. So <laughs> basically, they they get nowhere with Edward Bletchley. They. They can't prove that he stole the trophy, although he does fit the description that the churchgoer gave. Although not obviously not the differing description that the that the guard the paper gave. gave yeah, okay. uh, well, he obviously doesn't fit the one the paper gave because that yeah. was a, just that was a, not the right person. But um, maybe yeah, was the one he was the he was he was identified by the churchgoer as being the dodgy man. So he was around, but there's no proof that he was the one to actually take it. Ah. Um, but he he likely was. In the vicinity at the time, so he's charged with, um, with basically with with conspiracy to theft. Um, conspiracy, conspiracy to theft is was, was that a, uh, a, was I that a I I can't remember the exact the terminology, but but yeah, it was Sorry, he was steel. he was involved with with, with facilitating the, the theft, uh, and you know he was he was also um, charged with trying to profit off the theft as well by fencing the World Cup. So, and by fencing, we don't mean that he was trying to have a sword fight with. Him. <laughs> he was, uh, he was lobbing it over fences. The thing is, is that he he wasn't doing anything of the sort because he couldn't have because he was not away from the car long enough to have disposed of the trophy. No, he didn't have it on him. Uh, Which is sensible. That's didn't, the, that's the first sensible yeah. thing that I've heard Jackson Jackson do this whole time. Yeah, yeah. And also, the the trophy appeared in a location not long afterwards but it only appeared there after he was already in police custody in so police custody, it, it yeah. couldn't have been him that put it there so somebody else is definitely involved somehow so um the poll yeah the, the the police are giving up because they don't know what to do the fa are giving up a a, a replica is being commissioned by the fa uh it's, it's being started to be made so that they have a trophy for the world cup yes very essential however on the 27th of march 26-year-old David Corbett went to make a phone call at about 9pm in, and I don't know how to pronounce this place, so forgive me, Londoners, if I get it wrong, Beulah Hill. So, if, if that's what you're struggling, like all the, podca- all the podcast episodes that I do where I've got complex things to talk about and you're like, I can't pronounce well, it's, Beulah it's, Hill. It's just because I couldn't find any any guide on how to pronounce it. Let's have so, a look. It's, it's B-E-U-L-A-H. Yeah, Beulah. That sounds Bueller, right. Yeah. And Ferris Beulah Hill. Ferris Beulah. Ferris Beulah's Hill. Yeah. Um, it was where he went. But so, yeah. So he, he went to make a phone call. Remember, this in the days pre-mobile phones. So, <laughs> and, and, you know, before many people even had a home telephone. Yeah, I mean. Well. I, so you, you'd go you, out to the to phone the box. Local, yeah. Public phone box, yeah. I mean, yeah. This, is, this is back when they had police boxes still. So. Mm. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. He went out uh, and as he was doing that, he decided he would walk his dog, Pickles. Shortly... After they left the house, though, Pickles started sniffing at the hedge in front of in front of his house. David bent down and discovered a package covered in newspaper uh, tied together with string. Didn't actually recognise what he was looking at, despite the fact that he knew that the World Cup had been stolen and he was holding a trophy. He was just like, he, he looks, I mean... Yeah, when, come on, the, no, the reason, the reason The reason I described what, uh, how, it, how it looked, that it was made in the image of the goddess Niki, is that... It makes it look like a statue rather than rather than a cup. So yeah, he thought, oh, the World Cup's missing. If you're thinking of like a traditional cup, sports trophy, yeah, yeah. Um, he wouldn't have been thinking of of, of metal of boobs. Quite, yeah. yeah. So so he didn't recognise it uh, until he found the the plaque at the bottom, 
that had That's the names it. of the winners on it yeah. because he was quite into football. So, you know, it was said Uruguay, Italy, Brazil, West Germany. I think they would have been the only teams to have won it at that point. Oh, shit. That's, that's the World Cup. Don't know who he was going to call at the phone box, but who he actually called was the police to, to hand in the trophy. Thinking, he was going to phone Tinky this... Winky and yet he phoned the Poe instead. Oh, very good. Very good. You're on, you're on fire. He thought he'd be congratulated and given all the reward money. No, he was investigated because like, well, how, how come you found the trophy with your dog? Um, but because he, Pickles is the most amazing. Mm. He's better than Charles Buggy. Pickles yeah. is the best canine yeah. P- detective. Pickles, Pickles is definitely the most intelligent character we've had so far uh, <laughs> he in the story. Is. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but any, anyway, David, David Corbett had had a clear alibi. Couldn't find out what it was. but he I was hanging out with Pickles. What was I doing, Pickles? <laughs> he was hanging yeah, out with well, me. He, sausages. Pickles. Pickles. <laughs> We were eating sausages. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, pickles, pickles saved his saved his neck there, um, and he was actually given rewards not not from the police or the FA, but there were lots of newspapers and stuff that put rewards for people to find it. Okay. Um, Did he uh, get any money? Uh, yes, yes. Good. Six thousand pounds, which is about one hundred and twelve and a half thousand pounds today. Yes, David. which is yeah. Pickles I mean, is definitely getting some bacon. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Pickles, Pickles actually became a minor celebrity uh, after this. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Uh, I mean, for, he can you talk. Know, he, he, he can talk about yeah. sausages. He could give uh, David an alibi. Like, yeah, come on, yeah, yeah, brilliant. But you know, he was taken to like lots of events and stuff, and he'd be like, uh, you know, if you wanted to get like you know, Christmas light switch ons and stuff like it's that, like, you know, we just want a celebrity guest. You hit just the, get the button, dog. Pickles. Hit the button. Um, wow. Unfortunately, this this has a very sad ending. I oh, do not um, say that. Because a year, a year afterwards, poor poor old Pickles at, at an event. He um, got spooked by something and choked on his own lead. And no, <laughs> so Matthew. Pickles, Pickles had just about as a calamitous, as calamitous a life as ev- as everyone else in this yeah, story. Yeah, everyone else in this story. Um, but uh, you know, he actually found the World Cup. So he found the World Pickles, Cup. Pickles, and then off this more. This, this episode is dedicated to you. It is dedicated. So yeah, the 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 amount that that David Corbett got in 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 reward money was actually more than the Pickles players. was worth. <laughs> no, no, no. It was more than the players of the winning England team got for winning the, really? the trophy itself. How many pickles could you buy with that? I don't know. How many pickles could you buy with 112,500? Too many. I'm going to find out. So this is going to be... This is what I'm going to say. So how, many, how much money was it? £112,500 in today's money. £112,500. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's the story of the disappearance and reappearance of the World Cup. Clearly somebody else was involved, otherwise the World Cup couldn't have got to its final location before it was found by Pickles. Nobody knows who that was. It's unsolved. It was the pole, guys. It, well, <laughs> it and his well sidekick, Volt. <laughs> yeah, if, if it wasn't an invention of, of this Bletchley fella. There are a few theories. Firstly, there are two people called Sidney and Reg Kugelier. 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 Kigeli Kugeleri, no idea. Kugeleri. Um, they were they were gangsters at the time in London. Right. This was a few years ago, uh, after both Sydney and Reg had died. Reg's son said that Sydney did it uh, for a thrill. Like he wasn't really thinking about the monetary value of it. He just saw it, saw that he could get to it really easily, and just thought, "Oh, this will be a laugh." I mean, I've got to say that that is a yeah. That I could definitely sort of mm. see someone just going, "That'd be a laugh to just do that." Like you know, and then you go, "Oh God, I've just stolen the World Cup. Why did I do that?" Like, you know, maybe they thought they could melt it down. Turned out they couldn't. Uh, and so they just had to discard it because they were like, oh, okay, this is like, this will bring us down. Uh, in, in the same token, it could have been, you know, the, the Cray twins were active in London at that time. And it was... Why would they was, think the Cray twins would try and steal that? Well, because we, I can't remember which one's which, but there's Ronnie and Reggie and one of them yeah. is like really impulsive and just kind of crazy. And that's the kind of thing that he might just do. See the World Cup and just go, I'll nick that. So Would he be going to a Methodist church on a Sunday, though? Well, no, but he'd know where the World Cup was. True, like, true, true, that, you know, true. These are, these are well-connected people. He'd know like who was on who who, who was uh, on guard duty and stuff. And, like, you know, he'd know the time to go. And he'd just, you know, the kind of thing would just go, yeah, I'll steal the World Cup, I'll show you. So it could have been him, but, yeah, for the same reason, couldn't melt it down, far too much press attention. Just like, oh, I've got to get rid of this. Uh, the, the the other reason why why Bletchley couldn't have physically discarded it himself was because the area the police were driving around with with him uh, was six miles away. So there's absolutely no chance he could have got all the way to Beulah Hill to deposit the trophy uh, under under that guy's hedge under a bush. Absolutely Ronnie no chance. Ronnie Corbett's bush. Yeah. So 
that will have left a, a so what nasty did, image in your head. So did Davy did Davy Corbett buy a house, or did he buy like multiple dogs? I don't know. I it's, it's couldn't I couldn't find it reported what he did with the money. I mean, it sounds like he made a bungload of cash because if Pickles was a celebrity, that means he's probably getting paid. Well, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's probably getting paid through the nose. Who are you? So be, imagine that. Like, so who are you? Uh, I'm the handler of the most famous pet detective <laughs> in the world. <laughs> Amazing. So you didn't find the World Cup then? No, it was the dog. <laughs> <laughs> We're the goodest boy. That's that's what this episode should be t- called. The, 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 the goodest uh, boy, yeah. The, ta- the tale of the goodest boy. Well, this is the thing. So. The, that that money technically is Pickles' money. Yeah. And Pickles probably didn't want to be switched on the lights. David should have been switched on the lights. Pickles should have been <laughs> eating pickles. Yeah. Um, Quite, yeah. Have you got an answer for us? How much, how much uh, do I'm, I'm nearly there. So... Oh, it's a hundred and twelve thousand five hundred pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Seventy thousand jars of pickles. Seventy thousand jars. Seventy thousand three hundred twelve uh, and a half jars of pickles. Yeah. So, so how, how many pickles are there in a gym? That's a good question. So that was serious pig snacks. That's forty grams worth of pickles. Uh, how much does a pickle weigh? Let's let's say well let's say there's ten pickles in the yeah. jar. Yeah. So well, seven pickles. So you know seven hundred thousand pickles is how much that would get you. Yeah, I mean, you, you, either way, like <laughs> your dog's going to be eating food that's not suitable for a dog to eat for a very long time. Yeah. Um, An- another theory is that uh, it may have been an inside job uh, intended to get a bit of it was publicity. The Methodist, for, the Methodist priest. Well, no, not not for the church, a bit of publicity for the the tournament itself. So the trophy was insured for thirty thousand pounds. Remember, it was only worth ten. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, it was only worth three thousand uh, pounds. So it's yeah, ten times its worth. You know, it would be easy to fund another and keep the profits. Yes. Uh, so you know, you could have several. So you think World it's an Cup insurance job? Well, it could have been. The president of FIFA at the time was a man called Stanley Stanley Rose Stanley Rons. No, Roos Roos. That was it. Stanley Roos. Okay. Uh, sorry, I couldn't read my own writing. Uh, yes, Stanley Roos. Um, who was a bit of a, a, a dodgy character? He was against South Africa's ban for apartheid. Um, I'm, I'm going right, I'm, to. I'm not even going to go out on a ledge here. Like to be honest with you, in 1966, that doesn't make somebody people... dodgy. That's like that's just a common thing. Like people were like apartheid's a good thing. 1966, a lot of people were very racist. <laughs> like, mm. well, no, no African teams took part in qualifying for the England 1966 World Cup really? because uh, because of this. So. You know, it was so Stanley actually, stopped people from yeah. Stan, oh Stan, 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 Stanley Roos was actually not not seen in a very good light by Stanley other, Roos other, other was nations, a bit of a goose. Football associations because you know it, they they felt that it, it was damaging to the sport that that Africa that no African countries apart from S- South Africa who didn't qualify were were of participating. Of course, of course, South Africa wouldn't qualify because they they literally refuse to probably have their best players like you know well quite yeah so so yeah this was all a, a bit of a scandal and Stanley he, Roos, he was, he was facing abuse. huge huge Wee. pressures so you know maybe it was a press job maybe it was an insurance job to try and solidify things it needs for him to be, but it needs to be hoofed in the mm. testicle but yeah the fact that the security was so lax around the cup the fact that the police investigation was so bad and the fact that the papers gave a different description to either of the ones given by the guard and the churchgoer who witnessed this strange man, it's it's a level of incompetence that is quite staggering and attracted a lot of uh, criticism around the world from other FAs, bizarrely the Finnish FA were one of the first to... Finland have never qualified for the World Cup, so I don't know why they were so upset about it, but they um, you know, they were saying that the English FA were rubbish. For having lost the trophy, interestingly, well, they, they definitely were. I mean, they, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, they were. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's, that's inarguable. Yeah. Interestingly, the um, the FA of Brazil also chimed in, saying this could never happen in Brazil. So, oh. <laughs> should we move on to the next part of uh, this episode? Where uh, I tell you about the time that it happened in Brazil. Yes. So I mentioned way, way back at the beginning of the episode that um, um, before he died, Jules Rimet declared that the 
first team to win the World Cup three times would get to keep the the trophy in perpetuity. They'd get it forever. Really? Um, that team was Brazil. They uh-huh. won it for the third time in 1970. And that was with Pele in the squad. Very famous Brazil team. They were like miles better than anyone else. Mm-hmm. They, they got to keep it. And um, it was sort of kept semi on, on display in Rio de Janeiro. In 1983, right. a banker... Uh, by the name of Sergio Peralta, supposedly masterminded a heist with two accomplices. <laughs> Bankers um, can't mastermind anything. Well, they've just been mm. beaten by Redditors, for God's sake. <laughs> well, quite. Well, th- this one apparently did. Okay. Uh, well, I-, I say apparently. I mean, it's never really been proven that he did anything at all uh, in relation to the World Cup. Sergio Peralta, he had two accomplices, uh, Francisco Rivera and Jose Luis Vieira. They were arrested and it was claimed that Argentine gold dealer Juan Carlos Hernandez had melted the trophy down after it was stolen from the exhibition in Brazil. Now, I said earlier on that uh, in in England, it was a bit like a a, a Pink Panther film, the whole thing. Uh, In Brazil, it was like a Guy Ritchie film. So they were armed to the teeth and they stormed in, beating all the security guards up and nicked the trophy. However, these these people, these these were the ones that were arrested and charged Mm -hmm. with it. Uh, there wasn't really any evidence connecting them to it, apart from that they were all vaguely involved in the criminal underworld. Juan Carlos Hernandez, they checked his his foundry uh, and found no traces of the gold from the the World Cup in it. So that it was claimed that he he melted it down is probably not true. Uh, anyway, they they were all released on bail and uh, you know being told that like you're going to be sentenced to X years in prison. Unsurprisingly, they all then left Brazil. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> would, they were released would. on bail. Why would you ever release people who were clearly going to be a flight risk on bail? That doesn't well, make any quite, sense. Yeah, um, yeah so they, they they all deny involvement, obviously. <laughs> I, do, I, I wasn't involved in this at all. I am going to run away and look guilty as hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I mean, if, if the government is saying, no, you definitely do this, you're going to go to jail for it, it's going to let you out for a bit, then you probably wouldn't hang around to no. hope that justice prevailed. So, yeah, they, they all fled. Also, as we discussed earlier, the, the trophy was, was not solid gold. It was gold-plated. So yeah, I was going to say, this the whole thing. It couldn't have been melted down into gold bars anyway. Yeah, it, would yeah. have been, it would have been worthless if they did that. So, well, not worthless, but it wouldn't have been worth as much. many thousands of, yeah. of whatever. The actual, um, the actual trophy is worth more than the actual melted... So, trophy, yeah. what one of the problems is that we we can't really ask any of these people about it now Why because um, Rivera, uh, mm-hmm. he was he was shot in a bar and five times in a bar in 1989. Um, five separate occasions or all at once? Uh, all all at once, he was shot five times and died of those those guns. Why, why was he shot? Don't know. Just, just disagree with <laughs> He was just shot in a bar. Just think Guy Ritchie film. He came in and called the wrong person a slag and. Uh, well, the, the Portuguese equivalent you to slag. that. You <laughs> slag! You slag! Got did for that. Peralta had a heart attack in 2003. Um, Jake Peralta from, uh, yeah, from, from Nine-Nine. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Yeah, from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, yeah. Um, there was a potential informant as well. He he died in a car crash on the way to trial. Wow. Uh, he was about to go and testify. He was the person who accused Sergio Peralta because he said that Peralta had, had, um, had approached him to see if he wanted to take part in the heist, but because he was a patriotic Brazilian, even though he was a criminal, this this this, this unnamed man, he was a, he was a patriotic Brazilian who was like, oh, I can't steal I can't steal the World Cup trophy. Football is everything to to Brazil. I'm not going to do it. Not a chance. Yes, that makes sense. So so he he was in it, uh, on his way to tal- trial and he died in a in a car crash. Again, I couldn't find as to whether it was genuinely an accident or it was deliberate, but it's a bit of a coincidence if it wasn't deliberate. So do you want to know what the Portuguese is for slag. Oh, yes, please. So, who was it who got shot five times in a bargain? Francisco Rivera. So, Francisco Rivera, he walks into a bar and he goes, Oi, you Escoria. Ah, bang, 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 yeah, bang, 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 bang. Although, actually, thinking about it, he probably wouldn't have said it in, in Portuguese because he wouldn't have been in Brazil because he'd fled Brazil, so he wasn't there. So. Yeah, but have you seen any English people go to Spain? They don't speak Spanish. They're just, just yeah. like, oh, who are you, slag? Yeah, well, he, he might have said the Spanish for slag, yeah, which, even though I speak Spanish, I don't actually know. Uh, Escoria. Oh, it's the same. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> All right, okay, that was what he said then. There we go. So we've solved that bit of the mystery. <laughs> but uh, a mystery we haven't solved is where the Jules Rimet trophy is now. It's never been found. It's never been recovered. Yet it, like it. we say, it's <laughs> unlikely it was melted down Sasquatch. because yeah, because 
it, it, you wouldn't have been able to mount it into gold bars. So, where could the trophy be? Where um, could the trophy be, Matthew? We only know the places where it isn't, and that is there are a lot of places in the world that haven't been checked. So, <laughs> to the put bottom, it, they to check put the bottom of the ocean by any chance? Like they, they bikini they bottom not, where uh, SpongeBob's, SpongeBob's from. Lives, yeah. yeah, the replica that was made by the FA after it was stolen in England. Uh, was so convincing that FIFA bought it at auction in 1997. Thinking it was a real one. Well, just to think that it, they might have actually been switched by mistake. Oh. Because, you know, it's England, England's law enforcement and football association hadn't exactly been particularly careful up to no. that point. So it might well have happened. But um, but ex- expert analysis was done. Boogie! Uh, yeah, expert analysis was done. It was proved that that was not the original trophy. Okay. So it was the original trophy that went to Brazil and then disappeared. Could it have been that the the guy was going to testify in court? He was actually afraid of being killed before he got there, and he had the World Cup in a safe place. He managed to trick people to get it and give it back, rather than trying to avoid and he died any, and being executed. And we, but he died in the car crash and was never able to reveal its location. That's a good point. That's that's a, a theory that that I have. That uh, that would be yeah, quite quite sad in a way. Yeah, like, but but quite possible. I mean, nineteen eighty three. Oh, I, I wasn't even born then. Mm. Well, yeah, it, it it has been a while without surfacing, so it suggests that it probably isn't known where it is. By you know, both of us have been like born and become adults in that time. Well, like you yeah, know, it's yeah. like you know, my I parents are now both old us, people. Both both of us as well have got to the point where um, the average age of football teams is younger than we are. Yes. So <laughs> exactly. So um, like, it's it, that's a long grudge to have. Yeah. Um, against Charles Buggy. <laughs> Poor old Charles Buggy, but uh, where was where would you go and look for the World Cup trophy? Where would I go and look for the? I mean, it's not I would, Ronnie Biggs' house. Yeah, uh, Ronnie Biggs' house. I'd, I'd also check the trophy cabinet. Uh, did anybody whose trophy cabinet? Just every trophy cabinet. <laughs> every in the world. trophy cabinet just in the world. Explore trophy cabinets in the world. Has anybody checked under David Corbett's bush? <laughs> You know what? I I, I I don't think they have, but... Uh, yeah. so you, you killed pickles Maybe. off. You killed pickles yeah, off. By it. Yeah, these. it was a... Yeah, you know, pickles it was could have been a, on the it case. Was a hit. It was a hit, yeah. yeah. You well, didn't, yeah, you we didn't, didn't think about to, that. Are oh, we going to yeah. have pickles, like... Get, get everyone's dogs out, take them all to Brazil, walk them around, see if you they know, can... You're just like, like, look, that's what we need. pickles should not have been doing Christmas lights. Pickles should have been on the hunt all the time. <laughs> like. Yeah, should have just been the guard for the World Cup. The best, yeah, the yeah. best guard and the best, yeah, trophy yeah. sniffer. Trophy go. sniffer, so, trophy the sniffer dog. pickles the dog, yeah. yeah. So I, I I, think we can both both agree that uh, in this story, pickles the dog definitely comes out the best. Yeah, um, I think... The real I, hero. I think that the... I don't think it's been melted down, because it's meant to be melted down to gold bars, but it's, it's gold and nickel, so it's gold-plated nickel, so it's not solid gold yeah. that can't melt it down. So I don't think it has been melted down. I think somebody took it... I think probably what happened is I think somebody probably took it to a forger, someone who could melt it down uh, to a forge, and they went, no, I'm sorry, this isn't... It's gold-plated, so that's, that's not going to melt down. You can't do it. And I actually probably think they probably just threw it away. Mm. Well, the um, the stand has actually been found. So I, I told you that the trophy was affixed to a stand and yep. the stand had the plaque with the winners on it. That has actually been found. So they've ah. still got that part of the original trophy. So but... Bobby Moore's name's up there in lights. Uh, well, I mean, it'll be the England team, team yeah. rather than Bobby Moore himself. But uh, but yeah, uh, that, that bit has still been found. Uh, but yeah, the the actual trophy itself is, is still missing. The plaque is the only bit where we know where it is. So I, I reckon there's probably just... Some Brazilian dude out there somewhere just having a rub one out tonight. <laughs> just oh, do it, pal. Man, just what do a it. Horrible way to 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 bring the show to a close. <laughs> um, well, I'm 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 just gonna give a a, a film recommendation uh, because because <laughs> we can't that's, leave that's you on good. that note. Yeah, first. no, we we can't leave you on that note. Um, most most sports films that I've ever watched are awful, badly acted, and very predictable. However, one that isn't is uh, the Damned United, which is the story of Brian Clough, Clough yeah, uh, who yeah, and and his time, his very short time at Leeds United uh, Football Club. It's not not sure how true to life it is because the guy who wrote the book uh, has been heavily criticised for making things up. Yeah, and I mean, you know the book only came out after Clough and Don Revy, who 
was Clough's rival had died. Yeah. Uh, and Billy Bremner as well, who was the uh, one of the he was, he was the captain of Leeds when when Brian Clough was there. Because a lot of things are said about them that that is defamatory. But the the film isn't quite in the same uh, ballpark as, as 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 the book. The film has has done its own research to try and marry things up to facts. Right. But uh, yeah, it, it, in terms of a film about football, it's it's well acted. It's a great story. And, you know, it is actually entertaining. Like, even if you don't particularly like football, you could watch the film and enjoy the conflict between the characters because it is... Oh, yeah. Like, it's, a- you know, it's a film about a group of people and how they interact with each other rather than it being about a sport. I am not a football fan, but I lived in Leeds for a long time and I thought it was a good, good story. Yeah. Where do you think the trophy is? Where do I think the trophy is? Yeah, I, I happen to agree with you. Probably it's been discarded somewhere bottom of the Amazon, perhaps. Yeah, just thrown in the yeah. forest. Yeah. Well, there's no grass. I, I I meant the river, but... Uh, oh, the Amazon River. Yeah, uh, maybe. But, but yeah. This idea that it is still out there somewhere, I think it's, 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 it's a very... It's just a, a nice idea that it's just it's sitting in a box in someone's basement and they've they've, they've died never telling anyone that they have it and it'll, you know, it'll be found one day like someone, the great grand grandchildren of, of, of somebody will just be going through their old stuff and they'll go, oh, what's this box? And they'll open it up in the World Cups in there. Yeah, but you won't think it's the World Cup. What's, what does the, like, what does the Charles Romain... Not Charles. Jules, Jules Romay trophy. Jules, yeah, sorry, I'm going. I'm getting Jules Romay mixed up with Charles Buggy. Mm. Well, it, it it looks a bit like uh, it looks a bit like an angel, really. It's it's sort of the the effigy of this of this goddess with sort of wings. I mean, you you would you wouldn't necessarily know what it what it was, but given that, to be honest with you, given that um, Brazil's quite a religious country, that could easily be on someone's wall, and they just think it's like. The Madonna or something like that. Possibly. Possibly. Because that, yeah, that looks like it could be the Madonna. It wouldn't necessarily go, oh, that's got to be... The Greek goddess, Sneaky. The Greek goddess, yeah. yeah. So, like, yeah, I, I could... Because it's got, it's got a bit of a halo. Indeed. We will... I, I, I think let's... Uh, unless... Have, have you got a film recommendation? A film recommendation? Have you been inspired by, by any of the... I mean, City, various of, criminal City of God. City of God. Which is oh a, yeah, that's about crime in Brazil, isn't it? Yeah. Crime in the favelas. So yeah, yeah. we're talking about crime and Brazil. In in that case, if it's in the that's a good point though. If the if the trophy is in the favelas, it's never going to get found. Well, so. yeah, you you wouldn't just go in there, would you? Well, exactly, just, so just to find it. Just rough it area. Put and your also, guns like, away, guys. So many... I'm looking for the World Cup. Okay. Yeah. yeah just uh, yeah. I well, I, actually, I wouldn't like to see somebody try because it would be that'd be very horrific. Join us in two weeks when we talk about. Well, AJ is going to tell us about the Japanese island of Dejima. Yes, a bit different to our other episodes because it's not a mystery per se. It's an interesting place. It's weird. That yeah, it's it's interesting historical place. Very weird. Very interesting, and I look forward to hearing about it. So thanks very much for listening, uh, and. Yeah, we'll speak to you again in two weeks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.